My middle son calls me grandpa whenever I throw one of these short collar cards again. Kids. <laughs> Intro. You should come rolling my sh Yo, what up? My name is Vladimir Richet from ChaseAndRider.com. And in today's video, we're going to unbox my new favorite pair of shoes. No exaggeration. So as you guys know, I'm a huge fan of Yilsao. For those of you that aren't familiar, Yilsao is a brand out of Singapore. They sell shirts like the swallow neck polo shirt that I be wearing. They make suits, trousers obviously. But what I love the most about them are their shoes. Now just to be 100% transparent, even though Yilsao is not sponsoring this video, the shoes were sent to me for free. Although everything that you're hearing right now are just my thoughts, I didn't provide them with an advanced copy. They didn't tell me what to say. I've been a huge fan of the brand. I was talking about them before I ever had a pair. So nothing changes on that front. I'm still a huge fan. And I still think that these shoes are really, really nice. Now the shoes themselves aren't made in Singapore. They're actually made in a factory in China. And if my math serves me correctly, this is my fourth pair of shoes from Yosau. And I can't wait to show it to you guys, man. But we're not really going to waste a ton of time today. We're going to get right into it. So let's start with the box. Yosau comes in a brown box with gold lettering. They've changed the box since the last time I got a pair of shoes from them. This one looks to be a bit sturdier, although it's a different font, but it's written in gold, just like the last ones were. And the old boxes used to also be brown. And it's a drawer style box with a leather handle. Let's get to the shoes, man. And as you can see, the shoes come in two shoe bags. I'm not sure what the material is, but it definitely feels like a velvety material, which is pretty cool. And it says Yield Silent Co on the bag. Let's take a look at the shoes. Like I said, man, we're going to get to this real quick today. And these are the shoes right here, man. <laughs> so the style of these shoes is called a nail, but for those of you that are familiar with shoes, this is called a spiral hole cut and we'll get to it in a second on why it's called that. One thing that usually confuses people a lot of the time, they'll look at this shoe and think that it's an austerity brogue, and I can definitely see the similarities, but as we'll get to it, you'll see that this is very different from an austerity brogue. The color that I chose is an Oxblood Hatch Grain. As you guys know, I'm very, very into Hatch Grain shoes. Suede used to be my favorite, but now I think Hatch Grain is. Although they're probably about the same in my book, I still really love suede shoes. And this is my first pair of Oxblood in a long time. Like when I first started getting into shoes, I did have a pair of Oxblood shoes. I did end up selling them because they didn't really fit great. And this is a color that I really, really love. But unfortunately, not too many makers have Oxblood readily available. So you typically have to get those shoes custom, which is what I did. So this is a custom shoe where I chose everything that comes in the shoe. Now the last for this shoe is the DR70. As you can see, this is a round last. Yosau does have eight lasts to choose from. The other last that I'm really familiar with that I like is the SG65. So the SG65 and the DR70 are like twins as far as how they fit. The only difference is the SG65 has a square toe, soft square, versus the DR70 has a round toe. The thing I really love about these shoes is that they look different depending on the lighting. So I don't know exactly how they come in across on camera, but Axe Blood is like if black and burgundy had a baby, then you would have Axe Blood. So if it's really dark, they can definitely pass for black. And when they're outside, that's when you'll see that they actually have hints of burgundy in them. Like right now, when I look at them, it kind of looks dark brown to me. But when it's in the sun, you definitely see hints of burgundy come through. Ox Blood is one of the most versatile colors. As you guys know, I like burgundy, but a lot of people seem to shy away from burgundy because they find it to be a bit too bright. So Ox Blood is definitely a good compromise. If you want to get something that's not brown or that's not black, but you don't want it to be too bright or too flashy, then Ox Blood is definitely a good choice for that. Now this shoe, like I was saying, is a hatch grain leather, as you can see. And one thing about hatch grain, when they're lasting it, sometimes you're going to see that the toe is not as grainy. And that's because as they're extending the leather over the last, 
that can happen. But personally, I'm cool with that because that means I'll be able to get a mirror shine on this a lot quicker than if those were grainy like the Vamp is. I went with the Fiddleback option on the waist and I got a single sole color on here. And it also comes with the metal toe tips as you can see here. And for those of you that aren't aware and aren't sure exactly what the purpose of this is, the way that I walk, the front of the shoe is what always touches the ground first. So typically as I wear the shoes, the front is the first part to wear out. Versus when you have metal toe tips, which is flushed with the sole by the way, instead of the leather being damaged, the metal toe tips is what's going to hit the ground first. So that's going to extend the life of the shoe. In my case, I have so many shoes. Resoling shoes is not really something that I worry about, but I always get metal toe tips on my shoes anyway. Now, as far as the sole shape, I went with the silhouette. Another option would have been to go with a spade sole, which sticks out more in this area here. So it looks like a spade, but I wanted to stick to the classics. So I went with the, with the regular silhouette. I went with a black sole edge right here. So they have a couple different options for the heel. They have a straight and they also have a pitch. So with mine, I went with the pitch. And if you look, you can see how the heel goes inwards. As far as the sole, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can have it be two different colors where you have the ball front be one color and the waist be a different color. But I just went with a single color on mine, which is the deep purple. And as you can see, the shoes also come with lasted shoe trees. And those are included in the price of the shoes, which we'll get to later. And this is the double barrel lasted shoe tree. And by lasted, it just means that the toe is the same exact shape as the shoe. So this was made on the exact last as the shoe, which is something that I always recommend. So whenever a maker offers lasted shoe trees to go with the shoes, I always recommend that you get them. In your size case, it's an easy decision because it comes with the shoe. But even if it didn't, I would definitely recommend that you pay a little bit more to get the lasted shoe trees as opposed to getting a generic shoe tree because that's going to be the best fit for the shoes, obviously. Now, what makes a spiral hole cut so special? First, let's start with the name. So when you hear hole cuts, you don't typically expect for a shoe to look like this. But yes, this is a hole cut shoe, meaning that it was made from one piece of leather. So with hole cuts, typically, you don't usually see all these designs, but the way that the shoe is made, it's one long piece of leather that just wraps around the shoe. So think of an orange pill, which is the leather, and then just wrap it around the shoe. So this is just one piece of leather, even though it looks like it was made using multiple pieces, which is incredible. I've been wanting one of those for a while, so I'm glad that I finally got my hands on one. And as I was saying before, a lot of people do confuse a spiral hole cut with an austerity brogue. I happen to have an austerity brogue here, so I'll show you the differences. So the biggest difference is an austerity brogue is not one piece of leather. That automatically sets them apart right there. So a lot more craftsmanship go into a spiral hole cut than an austerity brogue. With a shoe like this, there are no seams because once again, it's one piece of leather. Versus when you look at the austerity brogue, you can see there's a seam right here. Even though it's a small seam, but you can still see the seam. One of the features that I like the most about a spiral hole cut is how on the inside of the shoe, it's a balmoral, so you can see how the line goes all the way back towards the back of the shoe. But on the outside, it's like an austerity bro. Let me, let me take this one to show you better. So if you're looking at both shoes from the outside, you can see how this line goes towards the heel, right? But when you look at the inside, it goes all the way to the back versus on the austerity brogue, the line still goes towards the heel. Can you see that? Now let's talk about price. If you were to order these shoes, they would cost you $786, US dollars that is. Now that doesn't tell you the whole story because some of these are extra. So for example, like I was saying, the metal toe tip that I got on my shoes, this is $45. And also for the fiddle back waist, that's also extra, which costs $65. So if you had a regular waist and you didn't have the metal toe tips, that would save you about $110. Now, as I was saying, these shoes are custom, so you would go to the Yieldsaw website and you would select all the options. And it takes about 14 to 16 weeks to get the shoes. Now, as far as the width, they have two widths, which is the standard, which is what I wear. And they also have a wide, so they don't have a narrow, they just have a standard and a wide. 
Before, Yale Style didn't used to use UK sizing, but now they do. But I would still recommend that you reach out to them, especially via Instagram, because they're very active on there. If you have any question about sizing, you can tell them what size you take in different brands, and they should be able to guide you from there. Now, the great thing about Axe Blood is that it's going to go with pretty much every suit color that you can really put on. The only suit color I wouldn't wear with Axe Blood is black. I don't want a black suit now, but if I did, black suits only go with black shoes. The fact that it's darker means that it can go with pretty much any suit color. It'll go with charcoal, it'll go with navy, light brown, whatever you want to throw at it, this will work. One color that I wouldn't wear with it is dark brown because I feel like they're too similar, especially when you're indoors. But I would definitely wear it with light brown for sure. But this goes with pretty much anything, man. That's just my personal opinion. I don't like to wear the same color shoe as my trousers, even though they're not really the same color, but indoors they can look like they're the same color, you know what I mean? And once again, I'm a huge fan of the brand and I've been waiting a while to get myself a pair of spiral hole cut. And I killed two birds with one stone here. I got the spiral hole cut and I also got myself a pair of Ags Blood, which I haven't had in a while. So let me know in the comments what you think about these shoes. Are you going to be getting yourself a pair? I do highly recommend these. And something about grain shoes and flannel work really, really well. So I'm definitely looking forward to be wearing these shoes in the fall and winter. And these shoes are right up there with my other shoes from Blazing Wonders as my favorite shoes that I own right now. Really, really love these shoes, man. I will include the link in the description to this exact model. And as I was saying, this is my fourth pair from them. And I'm looking forward to adding more. And wrist check, today I'm wearing my Sub Zero 35 and it's on a dark brown nubuck, which is just like suede since I'm wearing suede shoes today, dark brown suede shoes. And speaking of watch straps, if you guys aren't aware, I do have my own watch strap company called the Chase and Rider Straps. One thing about me, I always match my watch straps to my shoes. I'm not saying that's necessary, but that's just the way that I do it. And I'm actually very OCD about that. So my shoes and my watch straps always match. And that's what I would pair with this. As you can see, this is a perfect match. On the website, I call it Axe Blood because that's what it reminds me of. But the actual color is a dark burgundy. So hit the thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe or everybody gonna think that you're a hater. And I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.